Hey folks, my name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. If you followed my previous video, I disassembled the hydraulic cylinder and the drive pod for this Vermeer. I got all the parts for it, so now I'm gonna reassemble it and go back together with it. I went to a place in South Austin, close to the airport, kind of close to the airport, called Hydraulic House. And that's where I usually go to get all my seals and all my hydraulic uh, hoses and cylinders built. And those guys are awesome. They always have the seals in stock. There's been a few times where they've had to order it. And uh, they're just really good people there. So if you're in the Austin or Central Texas area and you want to uh, rebuild your your equipment yourself or pull your cylinders off and send it off to them, man, they are, they are really good. All right. See, I just walked in there to their shop with the collar and the piston and they they took all the seals out on the inside the ones they needed to to uh, get matched up so uh like i said they're they're great people there highly recommend them all right let's get this thing on Careful when you put this stuff on because you don't want to rip it. And this one's going to go on this way. This O-ring still just fine. All right, next, the wiper seal. And it goes in this way. kind of start one side and then just kind of work it down in there all right Should get the right size here. It's definitely a bigger one. Yep, that's it. That one. 
Now the flat face seal goes on the top. And by the way, this kit, when I say the kit, when they matched all these up, it was like 43 bucks for all these O-rings. So I would imagine Vermeer, if I'd bought the cylinder kit from them, it probably would have been in the neighborhood of uh, double that. Okay. Nothing to it. Let's put it all back together. All right, I usually prefer white lithium grease uh, to put on the face of these seals when you first slide them in, but I don't have any, so I'm going to use red wheel bearing grease, just a real thin layer when you work it in. It gets everything nice and thin. And it just helps prevent from cutting the seals when you go to slide them in. Alright. Same thing. Put a little bit of grease on it. that and the nut and this top this nut is a one and five sixteenths There we go. Voila. All right. Let me see if this will keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. get these races put in. One's bigger than the other. The big one goes on the inside. All right, next up is a shim. First thing in was a race. Then it's the snap ring. All right, next is the outer race, 3205.
certainly makes it easier when you freeze these things to shrink them down. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is put the bigger, the wider of the bearing, which is the 3205 on here first. fully seated against this and it is and it goes in here like so and next we gotta do that bearing this was a little bit tricky I had to press that bearing onto here and I did it by wedging this 2x4 in between the gear and this wall and I just hit it on with the socket then I put the shims on it and then the snap ring I'll do that last. All right, let's get this O-ring in. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's do this. All right, let's get this O-ring in. ring hmm. okay and last is the seal There's the lower gear. The lower part's done. Next up is the one that had the big bearing and this gear, and that should be in tomorrow. Okay, this outer seal, I had to go to Vermeer. Napa found it, but it would have taken a long time to come in, plus freight. And here's the Vermeer part number. The dealer actually had it in stock for that seal. And then these two bearings, the two bearings that are here and here, the, there's a big, bigger bearing here and then a little bit smaller bearing here are right here. This is your smaller bearing. This is your larger bearing. I found those at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Okay, I got the big bearing in. Here's the part number if you need it. This goes on that uh, assembly with the U-joint. So uh, it's a double ball bearing. These are the same thing that they use in wheel hubs, in your vehicle wheel hubs. But let me get this thing in here. It just you just hit tap it in until you hit the lip, and then it's got a snap ring. Got the bearing in there by using a socket and tapping it down without damaging it. Now I just need to put this snap ring in there. There's the snap ring. All right, now it's time to press that shaft on. All right, now this goes on like so. Perfect. I think that 
that's it. I think I just bottomed out. We need to get the keyway. This is called a keyway. And these keyways can actually get wear on the side over time, but this one looks pretty good. All right, now let's set it up in here. suck it down but before I do that putting some Loctite on it so now this thing's ready to spin smooth and there we go and see now that gear is gonna spin that gear and it sounds good Smooth, I think we're ready to go. Ready to go back together with it. All right, here's a number from, uh, here's the part number for the disc mower blades from Tractor Supply. I was able to match them up and find them there. They were 10 bucks each for a set. There's a left hand and a right hand. And then I got new knife stops from Vermeer. There's the part number if you need it. Here's the nuts. Some of you probably have the quick change. These are not the quick change. And then I've got bolts. Placement bolts. Okay, you can see now I got plenty of clearance and there's no way the blades are going to hit. And um, I had to time this thing. You can see the original bolt hole locations. So I clocked it one direction to the left. So we are good to go now. And I don't have to worry about the blades hitting anymore.
You saw me running it. I did a test run. There's no leaks. I topped off the, I topped off the drain plug back here. Um, obviously, before I ran it with some 80, 90 weight gear oil. And uh, after running it, I got my hand under here to feel if it if it's super hot. If it gets if it's if it's hot after a minute or two of running, then obviously the gears are uh, set too tight. But everything feels great. Seems to work great. The blades, no sign of contact at all, which is awesome. I've got uh, 10 more sets of these knife stops and bolts and blades to put on. Uh, I'm going to replace some of these. Most of them aren't too bad. I'm, I may just wait after uh, my last cut. But anyways, I hope, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of commentary during this video. It was just me assembling all the parts. But hopefully that gives you guys an idea on what to, expe to, to expect if you're going to rebuild these dry pods. Um, and, I, and a lot of you probably have the quick connect or uh, quick change blades. This obviously has got that quick change blade turtle on it versus the old one. This is an older unit, but somebody obviously put that newer updated turtle on it. I don't plan on doing that. I'm just gonna leave the, the factory old style uh, bolt in blades in, but uh, thanks for watching. And uh, the next video coming up is gonna be on that uh, new round baler I got. So uh, thanks for subscribing and following the channels those of you that are, and we'll see you next time.